and welcome back to Metropole Sports Centre. My name is Nashon Owano. Time for us to continue the conversation about the ongoing Olympics and the performance of Team Kenya. Just before I get into that conversation, before the break, we are talking about uh, Kenya Premier League with my guest in studio today, that is Ronald Okoth, the founder of RO Sports Academy and also a coach at Emerging Stars. Ronald, um, very quickly, I wanted to get your take on on the performance of Sofa Parker this season. I know it's your former team, so I just wanted to you to, 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 to give us your take on, uh, on, on how the team is performing. Are you impressed with how the team is performing this season? Uh, well, uh, now speaking as a fan and also as a former player, uh, I think uh, looking at uh, the, going by the standards, you know, that Sofa Parker set, like, you know, probably even 10 years ago when uh, they, were, they were promoted into the league and uh, you know, won the league, <laughs> just like Leicester did it mm -hmm. in their first season. I think uh, they've been performing dismally. And uh, also, if you look at the type of squad that they have, the type of depth in the team, uh, very good quality players, experience mixed with a lot of youth, some coming from the youth team. Uh, we have uh, Mohamed Kilume playing at the midfield, even though they lost Elias CH, who was one of their most instrumental players in that midfield. Uh, but uh, I, I, I don't think that should be an excuse as such for them to you know, uh, not perform at their best. But having said that, it's a team really under pressure at the moment. If you thought Gormaya and FC Leopards, there's pressure FC Leopards or Gormaya, then trust me, you're wrong. At Sofa Parker, the pressure is always, I think, 10 times because mm -hmm. uh, the president always has, has expectations and it's been a long time coming before this team, you know, they last lifted the trophy. And when John Barraza left, they brought in a new coach, you know, new players, including internationals from Burundi, Rwanda, you know, uh, Tanz in, uh, Uganda. Uh, a lot, th th there's a lot of, a lot was expected from these players, but I think there's a, uh, they still have enough time to try and maybe redeem themselves mm -hmm. and maybe just try and restructure and wait for next season. Mm -hmm. But still, having said that, it's still a, it's a very good team, very decent, mm -hmm. and hopefully next season uh, might, be the, might be the year. Okay. Uh, very quickly, uh, which position do you see them completing at uh, this season? <laughs> at the moment, uh, uh, I can assure you for free, uh, anything short of a top four finish or maybe a top five finish uh -huh. uh, will be doomed for them. So mm -hmm. probably they are at the moment, the way the league is structured, mm -hmm. the amount of games left, uh, I think uh, top five finish to me, would be good for them. Okay. Ronald, speaking of teams and performance, Team Kenya is not doing quite well, at least for, for rugby um, rugby and volleyball at the Tokyo Olympics. Um, just wanted to get your reflections on that uh, particular activity, that is uh, the Olympics that are currently going on. Just before I get to you, Ronald, there's just some data here I wanted to give um, in terms of the money ref and they are related to the Olympics. So the following are just some of the things that you need to understand about Olympics in our money ref uh, segment. Now, in terms of the prize money, the following is just how much the, the, the gold, silver and the bronze medalists in the competition take home. That is uh, gold winners take home 25,000 US dollars. Uh, silver, uh, the people who get the silver take home 15,000 US dollars and the bronze category, they take home 10,000 US dollars. This basically is, is cut, cuts across all the major um, genres of sports that uh, people are participating in the Olympics. An interesting thing to mention about Olympics, uh, these, uh, this year's Olympics and why it is quite different from the other Olympics, is uh, this year we have a couple of activities that have been uh, included in the Olympics. Olympics, we have surfing as a sport. People are actually competing to surf in the Olympics. Snow skateboarding has been included in that, and also the BMX freestyling uh, is an interesting activity that have been added into the Olympic this year. Ronald, Team Kenya is not doing so well at the Olympics at the moment. Um, what do you think is ailing the team, or what do you make of the performance of the team? Uh, well, true, true, true. Uh well, I think it's more to do with preparation. Mm -hmm. uh, look at uh, the way some of our athletes were preparing. I don't think we gave them enough support, you know, as a country. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe even as federation, the different federations. Uh, it all down, down to preparation. If you prepare well, adequately, uh, you know what to expect. Definitely, 
we must ex expect good results because mm -hmm. at the moment, if you look at the way the, the bo bo both rugby teams performed, of mm -hmm. course, uh, they didn't perform according to our expectation or maybe many fans' expectations. But uh, it's all about you know the mental preparation part. Were they ready for this biggest stage? Mm -hmm. Because if you look at again, most of them, it's been quite a, quite a long time, and uh, some of them are probably even you know uh, playing in this Olympics for the first time. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a it's a very big stage. So to me, I think it was all about just the preparation. And uh, even if you look at uh, uh, the former, uh, le 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 let me call him the former captain, mm -hmm. Amonde. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that. Uh, Mentally, they're not prepared. Uh, moments in terms of defending, they're not defending. Mm -hmm. When it came to the moments for scoring, they're not scoring. They're mm -hmm. just not mentally prepared. They're not just not mentally ready. Mm -hmm. And that really boils down to how well prepared were they? Were they given enough support? And uh, if you don't prepare well, definitely, you don't expect good results. And uh, one other thing I've noticed, uh, watching some of these games cutting across, you know, boxing, you know, uh, boxing, you know, taekwondo, uh, rugby, and even football, mm -hmm. Now this overall speaking, uh, most of the African teams or maybe the African representatives, uh, we are being outmatched by our counterparts yeah. who are more, you know, technically and tactically brilliant. Mm. And I think uh, it also tells me something that, you know, locally or maybe in Africa, we still don't have the structures in terms of supporting our athletes mm -hmm. across different sports to help them, you know, grow with the right training mm -hmm. and with the right, you know, technique tactically be, be, being tactically being tactically able to outclass their opponents because i mean in africa naturally we are powerful and we are big mm -hmm. but again when it comes to now executing you know uh, some of this uh, movement or maybe some of this you know whatever we are required to do in some of these games we are not we don't really have the precision we don't really have you know uh, the technical ability the tactical ability and mm -hmm. most of our opponents are actually outclassing us mm -hmm. because they're tactically superior and they're technically superior. So I think going back to the drawing board is a very huge challenge, uh, especially back here at home. We must go back to the drawing board and just put our structures right. We must develop our structures in terms of from rugby, you know, to boxing, uh, to kickboxing, to swimming. We must have the right infrastructures, the right structures that can enable our athletes to train well so that when they get to the world, you know, the world events, or maybe the world duel facing uh, very good opponents, they're able to outclass them. But at the moment, it becomes difficult because if you look at some of the, even these athletes, they don't even have, you know, they, they didn't even have the kits. Yeah. Some of them didn't even have, you know, the running shoes. But we expect, we expect them to go there and face some of the best, you know, sprinters, some of the best, you know, uh, players. It becomes yeah. difficult. So again, it's all about preparation. Okay. Ronald, uh, may I, I wanted us to delve a bit into the rugby teams. Uh, that is mainly the rugby, the men's rugby, that is the Shuja and the Lionesses team. Maybe my director can play for me some of the clips in the background as we're talking about this in terms of those two particular teams. Looking at uh, the Shuja team that is currently there, it's a mixture of sort of like young players and experienced players you 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 are big on matters and mentorship how do you think the issue of transition uh, of this team should be handled because the reality is transition is quite really important uh, in terms of con creating a continuity in terms of the performance of the team uh, without a doubt uh, transition is so important especially if you look at the next few years or maybe the next 10 15 20 years we'll be looking at you know the next generation of athletes who are now you know filling in the shoes of some of these legends who are living mm -hmm. and uh, i feel uh, to me there's no better stage uh, to try and start executing the transition part of a team like the Olympics. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, this team, the, the, the uh, our Shuja team, uh, the, the, the Sevens team, mm -hmm. it has a very, it, it, it's a team mixed with a lot of, you know, yeah, let me call them legendary players, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the golden class, mm -hmm. uh, the likes of, you know, Injera, now Monde, you know, now they're seeing off their careers and now ushering into the, uh, ushering the next generation of athletes and whom I feel are so privileged because they're able to learn from some of these legends, mm -hmm. whatever they've been doing over time. And now it's up to them now to step up and to fill in these shoes. Even though it might take time, the restructuring process, the rebuilding process might take time, but again, there's no better place for this to happen like the Olympics and also the next, you know, the next events that will be coming or maybe the next series that will be coming. And to me, I feel uh, we still have a very good opportunity in terms of going back to where we are because right now we're having a lot of young, experienced and quality players in that team who are able to, you know, take our flag back to where it was. It's all about a matter of time.
Okay. Um, Ronald, a key conversation that was going on in the Olympics um, this past week was the uh, withdrawal of Simone Biles from the Olympic gymnastic competition. As a result, Russia ended up uh, taking gold in that particular category of competition. A key thing that most people don't quite talk about in sports, I think it's only after this um, event is when people are realizing, okay, so the mental health of athletes needs to be taken care of. You've been on that particular stage as an athlete. Um, how, how do you think we are prepared probably as a country to handle mental health well-being of players? Uh, it's, it's a very important aspect of any athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I feel uh, uh, back here at home, uh, it's also a learning process for us. And it's a learning curve uh, because whatever happened uh, probably exposed, you know, some of you know the gaps that exist between you know athletes and maybe you know the, the sports itself and also this important aspect of mental uh, athletes' mental health and well-being. Uh, just a quick one: if you remember Adriano mm -hmm. uh, back in Inter Milan, yeah. at some point, you know, uh, he made some very peculiar decisions, and people are questioning, "Why did you do this? Why did you do this?" Mm -hmm. And actually, he came out the other day and say, "You know what? Whatever happened to that lady at that biggest stage? It's the same thing that happened to him." Mm -hmm. So I think it opens the, the, the it's open, it opens the conversation, and actually, it, it tries to you know uh, uh, sensitize and also just to you know create awareness of how important an athlete's mental well-being or maybe mental health and well-being uh, should be taken seriously because mm -hmm. if an athlete is not ready mentally uh, you know uh, psychologically probably you, you, you prepared well physically but emotionally psychologically you're not ready uh, it will of course you know interfere with your performance and it was expected and i think uh, whatever she did at that bigger stage uh, mm -hmm. congratulations to her because uh, sometimes uh, your mental health or maybe your mental well-being mm -hmm. is so important than even the sport itself. Yeah. Uh, you must be sane enough before you go, can go and p p perform because if you're not you know, stable mentally, if you're not healthy mentally, uh, if you're not you know, uh, in your right mind frame or mindset, mm -hmm. it becomes difficult for you as an athlete to perform at your level best. And uh, hopefully we'll have a lot of you know, uh, proper framework that will help most athletes, not just locally, but even around the world, mm -hmm. to try and also deal with such situations. Okay. Yeah. Ronald, the sad thing about the whole conversation about Simone Biles is I remember sometime in May when Naomi Osaka was going to participate in the French Open. And uh, after her first win, she went out openly and said, I don't think I am in a better mental position to handle these um, interviews. Like, I'm going to be skipping the interview. And as a result, the organizers of the French Open went and slapped her with a 15,000 US dollar fine. Uh, how important is it for the key stakeholders within the sporting fraternity to take this whole issue seriously? Because the reality is it can't only, mental health is, is an all-round conversation. You know, it doesn't only boil down to an athlete. It has to be something that is picked up by probably the coach, the teammates, and the federation in itself. How do you think uh, stakeholders in the sporting fraternity can handle this whole issue? Because it is an emerging issue right now. Yeah, true, true, very true. Uh, it's a very important and, uh, you know, a very important subject. And I, I feel uh, the buck starts with the federations, the different affairs. Uh, it's, it's up to them now to, you know, uh, put in those, you know, proper framework that will ensure that some of these athletes, or maybe not just some of these athletes, but every athlete uh, cutting across all the sports and all the, you know, uh, all the journals of sports that we have locally and even internationally are well taken care of in terms of their mental well-being. And uh, hopefully maybe this is something uh, that, that it has triggered a conversation that we are bound to see uh, some of this federation, you know, uh, taking charge and also putting in, in, in place those uh, proper frameworks that will ensure that at least are taken care of both mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not, it's, it's not just about money because mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the previous time we've seen you know, athletes are being fined for doing this, doing that, but they're not ready to do it. Mm -hmm. So again, it speaks volumes of what our priorities are. And this conversation has come at a very important time and mm -hmm. at a bigger stage mm -hmm. and hopefully it will change the whole trajectory of sports. Okay. So, so uh, thank you so much, Ronald Okoth. Uh, just before I take you to the events watch, Ronald, you mentioned there's an event happening tomorrow uh, at uh, about uh, Emerging Stars. Maybe you can talk to us about that. 
Yeah, Emerging Stars Soccer Academy, we are hosting uh, Luther Young. Luther Young is the father of Ashley Young from Man Manchester United, uh, former Inter Milan, uh, currently moving back to the EPL. Mm -hmm. he'll, be also, he'll be having a talk with us and also the parents, and we also we are inviting his son free day. It's an open day for each and everyone to just come in, let's have fun, let's engage, let's mingle, as we all get to know more about Emerging Stars Soccer Academy. Okay, thank you so much, Ronaldo Koth. Well, time for us to switch into the Events Watch segment of the show, and the following are just some of the activities that you need to be watching out for this coming weekend. In the Kenya Premier League, the following games are going to be played. That is Madare United versus Sofapaka, Kakamega Homeboys versus Kariobangi Sharks, and the big game that I can see my cameraman, that is Jesse Tete dancing to, that is AFC Leopards versus Gormahia. This is going to be the Mashemeji Derby. I remember AFC Leopards and Gormahia played at the Nyayo National Stadium a few weeks ago uh, during the final of the Bet FKF Betway Cup and Gormahia came at the top of that particular fixture. It's interesting to see whether AFC Leopards are going to break the jinx and win the Mashemeji Derby this time round. In the Kenya Cup, the following games are going to be played. That is, KCB is going to be squaring it out against Masinde Moliro. Revol Resolution Impara Impala, I beg your pardon, Saracens versus Strathmore. Leo is also going to be taking place and Mwamba versus nondescripts is going to be taking place again tomorrow this coming weekend in the olympics uh, actually finals are going to be uh, taking place that is nespoli mauro versus dalmeida marcus uh, going to be uh, participating in the archery finals shani ite from israel is going to be playing against tan chi chun uh, from china and then mohammed hairul anwar versus kim hujin are going to be playing in the archery finals. Away from that, uh, the following track and field events are going to be taking place. People are saying that uh, this is when now the Olympics actually starts for Team Kenya. Now, women's 400 meters hurdles is going to be taking place. The men's 800 meters is going to be taking place. Round one, round one of the 100 meters men and women is going to be taking place. And then round one, women's uh, 3,000 meters steeple chase and then men's 200 meters hurdles and then the women's short put final is also going to be taking place. I know you didn't know this, but we actually have a beach volleyball team that is representing the country at the Tokyo Olympics. And tomorrow Kenya is going to be squaring it out against Latvia. Finally, in the women's rugby, that is the Lionesses, are going to be playing against Great Britain. And uh, also Kenya is going to be playing against the Dominican Republic. Now that's all the time that we, that's that's uh, that's all the time that we had on Metropole Sports Center. Do wish you a fantastic weekend. See you next week, same place, same time. <laughs>